What's going on, everybody? Broken Games HDR back at it again with another video. And last night was a wild night. So overnight, a whole bunch of sensitive internal Microsoft Xbox documents um, and information and emails um, have leaked by no fault of their own, but due to the FTC. Uh, because during the you know Activision Blizzard you know King trial and all that stuff, um, they had to hand over all these documents. Um, and internal uh, and internal information to the FTC, if I'm understanding that correctly. And months ago, when this stuff was at its height, um, some stuff leaked then on from both camps, right? PlayStation uh, and 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 Xbox, Sony, Sony and Microsoft, right? Um, and some people are calling this new leak like the biggest leak ever. And I'm thinking about it. This one is definitely prob is probably worse for them because even though this new leak is like emails and information from 2020, it's still more relevant to their future than the information that leaked from both camps um, a few months ago. This stuff is still like time, it's still timely and it's still m way more relevant. It's, it's crazy the amount of stuff that's leaked. Now, here's the thing, right? So some of the stuff that, that's, that's leaked um, leaked out overnight is like plans for future games, mid-gen console and controller refresh plans, uh, private emails divulging acquisi uh, acquisition talk, you know, plans going into even next gen around 2028, um, how they're going to utilize AI and gaming, you know, the Xbox Series X and S sales split, a lot of information um, that I don't even know if I have all of it. I thought I had all of it. Then I went and looked some more and then a whole bunch of it, it, it showed that, oh, no, there's, there's way more that actually leaked. I don't know if I have everything. I think I have all the important stuff, though. And I put this in a, you know, a Google Docs um, document so I don't have to, like, just go through and scroll through Twitter. I, you know, I, I figure this would be easier. So first of all, let me just say that there are some fanboys who are already upset at this. And I was confused. I'm like, well, what are you upset about? They're, you know, they're already talking about, oh man, the FTC has to pay for their crimes. Look what, look what they've done. I'm like, what? I'm like, what? Excuse me? Are, are you a consumer or an employee? As a consumer, I don't understand why you would be so furious about this. You being actually like emotionally upset that some documents and information from Microsoft has leaked makes no sense to me from a consumer standpoint. You are a consumer. Act like it. Because you try to pass off the, a lot, and it's, it's a few of them, not like most of them. Because a lot of these dudes try to pass off like, oh, they just care so much from the, you know, as a consumer. No, y'all don't be acting like consumers. We've we seen y'all turn into, you know, pro bono lawyers during this whole trial. Y'all seem to switch careers based on whatever, uh, whatever suits you to help your, your favorite company. And now y'all are upset that some company documents have leaked? Why? How does that affect you or bother you, even from a consumer standpoint? See, when I can understand, somewhat understand that they didn't like the FTC, the FTC trying to stop the ABK deal, right? Because they felt like that's stopping them from getting like exclusive games to their platform and to Game Pass and all that stuff. I can somewhat understand that. But there is no way you can convince me that leaks like this specifically hurt you as a consumer. They don't. So that, that fanboyism in your brain got you thinking you some type of employee and you're like conflating the two. You're acting, bro, you're acting like an employee. Be a consumer, right? Because, and to be clear, I'm not talking about like leaks like stuff that you know like actual sensitive leaks from games right like for example um like we would i would personally love for some stuff from playstation to leak i literally said that in my video like a week ago like S sony has been so secure and, and, and tight-lipped i would love for some stuff to leak once again i'm not talking about like actual like gaming clips or a whole like what happened with the last of us for example where major last of us part two where major story beats or like actual the whole damn story leaked online i'm not talking about that i'm just talking about 
some actual confirmation, um, um, you know, verification of existence for some of these games that they're working on. That's the type of leaks that I would love. Some people would kill for some leaks from PlayStation right now, and you're crying about this? We would love this type of information. Like, what are you, what are you mad about? It's just weird behavior, bro. It's, we it's weird behavior. You're, there's nothing to be mad about here. Now, from Microsoft standpoint, from a company standpoint, oh, yeah, this is terrible for them. This is bad for them because the competition now knows some information on you and you don't have it, most likely don't have it on them. You don't want them to know what, what you're planning because they can look at this and, and, and like see what, what you're doing and, and pivot, plan around it, see how they stack up, all that good stuff. And some of these emails that hopefully I actually get to don't necessarily make Phil Spencer look, I don't think it makes him look bad, but it doesn't um, line up with this image and this reputation that they try to portray. I'll, I'll say that. So this, so this is the mid-gen refresh console. I, I, I guess I'll um, start out with that. Mind you, this stuff is from 2020, apparently. This doesn't mean that this is actually going to release. I'll put that out there. It doesn't mean that this is abso absolutely going to release. But this is not some preconceptual design and, like, spec stuff. This seems, the way this document looks and all this information, this seems like it got deep into way past the conceptual and planning phase into actual like execution. So I'll, I'll say that maybe it didn't, but this is way past just floating the idea. This is way past just thinking about it. This was more along the lines of them actually doing it. And the code name is Brooklyn, by the way. Um, and it's the Xbox Series X refresh. And l like I've been saying, I've been a proponent of we need mid-gen console refreshes. Both sides should have them. Microsoft and Sony should have them. I've been saying that. And some people, you know, wanted to know we don't need them and they're not needed. And yeah, bro, both sides should have them. I just think it's an overall great option to have. And even with the information that we learned from another leak, um, I guess I'll go down to it now about the Xbox Series X and S split. And this, is pr this pretty much says, uh, I believe that this, this stated that like 75% of <clears throat> Xbox owners in this gen have Xbox Series S's and not X's. Only like 25% have X's, if I'm understanding this correctly, because this is the left is what it is. And the, uh, the right is, is the forecast heading into a, 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 certain, um, a certain time. So even with that fact, and we, we already knew that, like, for example, the PS4 Pro was the, you know, so, didn't, wasn't the majority of P PS4 sold. But to me, even if it's just, let's say, an, a, out of what, what is PlayStation 4 up to? 120 million? Let's say 120 million. Even, a, even if 100, even just 10 million of that 120 million were PS4 Pro owners, I still think that matters because those are people, the hardcore, the enthusiasts, that you've convinced and may have been on your platform simply because they care about stronger hardware. And that still leads to more players on your platform, more sales, and more activity on your platform. So, they, so in the situation where the competition doesn't have one and you do, that's still a potential 10, 15 million people who may want to play on your platform because you have that option to have to play at better frame rates, but better resolution, and the competition doesn't. So, yes, by a percentage, it's very insignificant, but I still think that stuff matters, in my opinion. So that's why I've been all for, well, that, that's on the business side of why I've been all for, you know, mid-gen refreshes. But for me personally, I care about having the, the best playing games at the, at, at the best conditions that I can, right? I, I mean, it's the same thing with, with, my, with my PC. I have a 4080, not because 
I wouldn't be able to enjoy games with a 3080 or a 2080, but I'm not compromised. And as, and as far as like, you know, consoles go, you know, we don't have that freedom, that, you know, that choice. Um, but I want to have the best option that they make available to me. So that's, that's really it for me. If, if, if you can provide a mid-gen re refresh console that a game that was running at, let's say it dropped down to 50 frames occasionally, maybe into the high 40s, and now it's running at a locked 60, yes, I want that. If these textures didn't look as good before, you know, they were like kind of on, you know, these textures were, were, were kind of like on the low medium setting type and you can get that to high. Yes, I want that. Whatever you can do, e even to some people, if it doesn't matter, it matters to me and I like the option. So I think mid-gen refreshes should always just be there and be an option. So as far as um, this mid-gen refresh console goes, so it's a cylindrical shape. All digital, two terabyte storage, USB C, uh, USB C front, you know, power delivery, Wi Fi, of course, Wi Fi six E support, Bluetooth. Uh, what else we got? Um, none of that stuff matters. Direct connection to the cloud. Launch price five hundred dollars. The can the 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 redone controller. Um, and, and they're calling it a new, uh, more immersive controller. Uh, code code name uh, Sibyl. Um, two tone color scheme. Direct connection to the cloud, Xbox Wireless 2 connection, precision haptic feedback, uh, VCA haptic feedbacks, which doubles as a speaker, quieter buttons and thumbsticks, rechargeable swappable battery, modular thumbsticks. So some of these features, because of some of these features that people see, they're, they're essentially calling it the Xbox DualSense and saying, see, Xbox looked at PlayStation and clearly saw they had the better controller. I don't really care if, if that's the case or not. I never really understood the whole fanboy, the whole fanboy narrative of, oh, look at you copying us. Like, like I, who cares? I, I, I've always hated that like argument and that narrative of, oh, they're, they should copy each other. They should. That's not a bad thing. I've never understood how people spin copying into a bad thing. The only way copying is bad is if you, you like, if it's a, like a shameful copy where, it's just a poor, if, if it's poorly done. But the competition should copy each other if the other one does something good. I've never understood like, how that's a bad thing. Now, if, yeah, I guess fan bases start to deny, start to debate, like, oh, no, ours is better, or no, ours is better. I guess they use this as ammunition, but like, I've always said copying somebody else. There was a quote where if you're not copying the competition, you're doing something wrong. You, you should copy them if it's something that's, that's good and people clearly like, because now you've kind of like nullified something that they have uh, and you don't. Now that's, now that's nullified. Now it's fair, you know, it's playing across the board. So that, that whole copying thing, I don't think it's a bad thing. Copy, please, please copy. I see nothing wrong with that. Here is like their projection for the growth of Xbox Game Pass, if I'm reading this correctly, and I need to enlarge this a little bit. So by, by like fiscal year uh, 2030, they project or they want to have 100 million Game Pass subscribers. I don't think that's ever going to happen. Don't think that's ever going to happen. As, as reports have come out that um, subscription services have completely like plateaued. Everybody's just plateaued. It hasn't grown in like two years. Because I think they've reached like the cap audience for it. The fact is, not everybody wants a subscription service for something, especially gaming. So the ceiling for it seems to be capped around 30 million. Maybe it reaches 40 million. And I don't really think the, I don't think the, even when you add, <clears throat> like, even when a, a lot of these major games start to release, I don't think that's going to change anything. Because the fact is, you always have people who are going to subscribe and unsubscribe. So it's always going to be this, like, ins this, you know, this, this unstable, uh, you know, uh, subscriber count that's in flux. Which is nothing, there's nothing wrong with that. But I don't think it's ever going to stabilize at one of these, like, really high margins, like 60. No, I don't, I don't think it's ever even going to get there. 
leaks, the leaks have been the best part of this whole trial, by the way, because if you're somebody like me who doesn't give a damn about all the legal jargon and all that bullshit that was happening, you just care about the gaming part, the leaks of interesting information has been the best part. It gives us something to talk about, gives us something to, you know, uh, some information that's, that we don't normally get provided with, and we get to see some game leaks and some plans. So if we look at uh, further down the line here at like fiscal year 2022, Indiana Jones games, Oblivion Remaster. Some people, I saw some people are really excited about that. Uh, Ellis Scroll Online expansion, Starfield DLC. Uh, I don't, in fiscal year 2020, 2021, um, not sure. What, what was Project Kabiki? I'm not sure what that, what that is. Um, but as we go further, Doom Year, Doom Year Zero, and DLC. Is that a new Doom game? Or I'm not sure what Doom Year Zero is. It sounds like a new title. And then there's, it's going to have DLC. P Project Kestrel, Elder Scroll Online Expansion, Project Platinum, Elder Scroll Six, Project Kestrel Expansion, Licensed IP Game, um, Fallout 3 Remaster, Elder Scroll Online Expansion, Ghostwire Tokyo Sequel. Very excited about that. Um, because, I, I, listen, I've said that I've, I like Ghostwire a, a lot. Um, and I think it's a great foundation for something that could be really great. Like, we always talk about the, compa the, compa the jump between Uncharted 1 and Uncharted 2. I think Ghostwire Tokyo is Uncharted 1. And I think its, it's sequel could really be Uncharted 2. I really like that game. Um, I, I, think that's, I think it's a way better game over Deathloop. Yet Deathloop was the game that was like, that got like in the high 80s and was nominated, you know, to be a game of the year contender, which is insane to me because Ghostwire is, is in my opinion, the way better game. Dishonored 3, very excited about that. But the only thing on this list that I'm like, where is it? Is Evil Within 3. Like, what's up with that? Um, that's, I, I really want an Evil Within 3, but I'm glad, I'm, I'm glad to see Dishonored 3 on here and, and a Ghostwire sequel because I don't care about Bethesda's published i don't care about bethesda's games that they develop themselves but i care about the other ones that they that they publish so i would love to see like i said i would love to see a leak like this from playstation we would love that a lot of these fanboys who believe in who be believing a lot of this pr mumbo jumbo look absolute look like absolute morons because microsoft has been and phil spencer and all of them have been portraying this this Using the angle of we're the good guys. We care about you, pal. We're doing everything for the greater good of gaming. We're looking out for you, the little, the little person. Bullshit. It's all nonsense. And I'm not mad at them for using that, the angle. I'm mad at, like, these Xbox fans for believing this shit. Like, y'all really be falling for this good guy stuff. Oh, man, they're so pro-consumer. Man, I can't believe it. Y'all be making me mad. Y'all be falling for this bullshit. So, so first of all, there's a, um, this, this first email is about Phil Spencer saying that he would love the opportunity to acquire Nintendo, right? And I'm, I don't think this is like, this, this email isn't really saying that like they, they were actively trying to do it. It was kind of like something that's being floated and talked about. If the opportunity arised, they would do it. Okay, cool. I'm pretty sure they never actually approached Nintendo. So I, I want to be fair, fair with that. But in the email, he also talks about it from the perspective of his own career for fu fulfillment, fulfillment. Him being the guy to go down in history that was able to bring Nintendo under Microsoft. That's essentially what, what he talks about. Like, it would be the highlight of his freaking career. That's what, that's what he's concerned about. That's what he talks about. He said it would be a prime asset for them. That doesn't sound like somebody who cares about making an acquisition for the greater good of gaming and the industry and the consumer. Because here's the thing, I don't care how much of an Xbox fan you are, there is, in, let's say in a world where Nintendo would want to be acquired by anybody, let alone Microsoft, if that actually, you know, happened for some odd reason, which is unfathomable, 
there's there I don't care how much of an Xbox fan you are, there's no way you can spin that and tell me there would be a anything positive out of Microsoft owning Nintendo. There and, and mind you, once again, it's a 2020 email still. And we know back in history, we we know the you know the story about Microsoft trying to acquire Nintendo, I don't remember what, 20 plus years ago, and they literally got laughed out of the room, literally. How would that help gamers? How would that help the industry? There, there would be no positives. There will be, it, it would just be an all around terrible thing to happen. And this, and they also mentioned, I think, ZeniMax and, and Warner Bros and all that stuff. Cool. But there's no way you can spin this, especially when you talk about your own career fulfillment, about, you know, in relation to acquiring Nintendo. You're not doing it for the greater good of gaming, right? It, it's, it's absolutely egregious. And, it's, and it will be bad. Every time you try to have like a real conversation with like an Xbox fan or you, you know, you, you, you point out the fact that, listen, Microsoft seems to be kind of going a little bit nuts and being pretty egregious and overly aggressive when it comes to acquisition and consolidation with their strategy. You just get called, oh, you're a fanboy. Oh, you're scared. Oh, look at them cope. Oh, fearful. When it's like, no, bro, like there's actual repercussions and consequences to what Microsoft is doing at this level when they are so open to just acquiring any publisher they can to feed the beast of Game Pass to meet, you know, and, and use anything they acquire as a means to their end, regardless of how it impacts the industry negatively. It's like, no, nah, none of that stuff matters. You're talking nonsense. <clears throat> There's, as long as uh, Microsoft acquires more things, it's good for me as the game. No, that, that's not the case. That's the way they look at it. No matter what the situation is, as long as Microsoft gets more, it's good for gaming. Like, no. Like, bro, use your brain. Like, seriously, put the fanboy stuff aside. Use your brain. I don't care who this would be. There's no way you could say that this is a good thing. And once again, this is just an idea being floated in an email, but it just, it's just very contrary to the, the, the image that they try to portray themselves as the good guy. They're doing this for the right reasons. They're trying to save this publisher. They're trying to save this developer. They're doing this for the, for the gamer. We care about the gamer. We're pro-consumer. It's for them. If you're a company, and like I said, in the alternate universe where Nintendo actually comes to you or something and or it tells you, hey, we want to be acquired. You can't turn that down. You, you kind of can't. It's Nintendo. So I, I get it. I, I get it. You if that situation arised, you cannot turn that down. But it's the fact that like it just this this kind of illuminates and shows that they have no like they have no stop. They have no pause. There's no like there's no line that they wouldn't cross in the industry for acqui for acquisition as long as it would be allowed and granted because they went through this whole thing with the FTC in this trial they might not want to go through all that litigation and stuff stuff again but um that aside yeah there there's nothing they wouldn't acquire it seems we've seen that 100 list that 100 like well, maybe 100 developer list of possible acquisitions that they were thinking about. Come on, bro. Come on, dog. Like, I don't care how much of a fan of Xbox you are. You got to admit this is ridiculous and this is bad. And they should not be doing like they shouldn't be like thinking like this. And like they it, it points to the fact that they do lack a certain amount of like creativity and the ability to do certain things on their own. There's that like famous um, quote from, uh, was it Steve Jobs or, or, or Gates? Might have been Jobs, where he says just Microsoft just has no culture, has no creativity. They're just like this machine and they just like essentially he was saying they just ac acquire stuff. When you look at their, their business and how they do things, they have like no creativity. That's just not in their DNA. And I don't like, I don't like like pushing that and subscribing to that 
<clears throat> but we got to call a spade a spade sometimes and like look at the, the their actions and how they talk and just and just call it what it is. There's no way around it, bro. I don't like to use that type of stuff against companies because like yo companies are going to company, but it's crazy. Um and then I, there's probably more emails than this. This is the this is these are the two I have. This is Phil Spencer telling Satya Nadella. This this email might be worse than the other email because it just shows how divorced Phil and I like Phil, but he's divorced from reality when it comes to gaming and his gate and gaming taste and what's good in gaming and quality. So he said and this was uh you know regarding the launch of the, the PS5, which by the way, why is he talking about the launch of PS5 when Another narrative that they put out there that they've brainwashed their fan base into believing is that so that Microsoft isn't in competition with Sony. Xbox isn't in competition with PlayStation. They're in competition with Amazon and Google. You know how you know how tired I, I got of hearing that nonsense? It was such utter bullshit. Bullshit. And, and like and 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 I hate Xbox fans because they literally just start to like regurgitate everything Xbox says. They have no spine and no like actual thinking on their own to like kind of look at the things they do and look at the things they say and be like, mm, I don't really believe that. I don't believe that. Just the ability to say those actions don't match up with what you're saying. If 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 X if Xbox says sales don't matter, what do they what do their fans say? Sales don't matter. When Xbox when when Xbox says, oh, the we this 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 gaming um is going in this direction with with subscription services, you know, it's all about subscription service. No matter oh resolu oh frame rate doesn't matter. Frame rate, you know what? Frame rate don't matter. Their their fans just follow everything, the every narrative they that they make up. And it's sickening. Just have it, Literally, they, they could have a they could have the opposite opinion the day before. If Microsoft comes out and says the opposite, they adapt it just like. But this this email says um, this is Phil Spencer to Satya. We have a better product than Sony does, not just on hardware, but uh, equally important on the software platform and services on top of hardware. Uh, we have the ingredients of a winning plan. May I remind you that the. Xbox, if, if I remember cor correctly, the Xbox Series X and S launch had no first party games. It was a horrible launch. Horrible. I may be forgetting something. Maybe they did, but I know they wanted to launch Halo. Yeah, that, that didn't work out. And it was clear that didn't, that wasn't going to launch in time and it wasn't ready. And Phil Spencer somehow didn't know that. Phil Spencer somehow saw that gameplay of Halo that we saw that me as a gamer with my eyes could tell you this game looks bad and there's no way you can release this game. Me. I was able to see that and many people online was able to see that and somehow Phil Spencer wasn't. Like, for example, Jim, Jim, we know Jim Ryan don't play no games. So Phil Spencer is definitely like a gamer, one of those gaming like um, executives. So I, don't, I just don't understand. And I do believe any conversation needs to start with believing in that. This was a good day for Xbox. Delusional. Delusional. And I can see why their fan base is delusional a lot, of the, a lot of their time. It comes from the top. It absolutely comes from the top. This, this man is delusional. I, I need this good guy image stuff to stop. This we care about the player. A, a lot of companies try to like push that narrative. Some more than others. Stop believing this nonsense. Stop it. And stop falling for everything they tell you when it's clear it's not true, bro. Like, and when it comes to this co consolidation and acquisition stuff, can we just please come to an understanding and all agree that it's bad? Not all of it, because like I said, I was completely fine with them getting Bethesda. I wanted them. Um, to do it because a lot of these IPs that Bethesda has, we were going to die and we weren't going to get any of them. But there's a line that should not be crossed and Microsoft is clearly okay with continually crossing it. So 
that's all I got to say about it. Let me know what y'all think. Hit the like button. Um, I feel like there's so much to say about this. I don't know if I've mentioned everything, but I think I got my main points across. Um, hit the follow. Follow me on Twitter. Uh, hit the like button. Let me know what y'all think about all these leaks. And uh, I'll catch y'all on the next video. Peace.